All right. Hey, folks. Welcome to The Bulwark. I am joined here on Friday, September 6th by Mark Caputo in a Harley Davidson shirt, which he always dons on a Friday, especially in September. Got, Got it for free at the RNC, man, in Milwaukee. There were oh, shoot. There. I yeah, should have. I wish Harley I could. Shirts. I'm never above a free shirt. Um, look, we're coming, to, <laughs> we're coming to you after uh, Donald Trump held what I guess you can call kind of an impromptu news conference. He just announced it yesterday. Um, it was a little bit confusing why he was doing it then. Turned out it was very clear. He's appearing in court today. Um, his lawyers were arguing against a $5 million verdict uh, that found him liable for sexually abusing uh, advice columnist E. Jean Carroll. Uh, they were arguing that it should be overturned. Um, as is somewhat customary for Trump, he decided that um, in these legal proceedings, he was going to uh, leave them and then go talk to the press. This was not a press conference. It was just a, a press statement. But Mark, I guess I, I, I want to start with sort of the reasoning behind doing these things. Like, I think most people probably don't want to draw attention to the fact that they're um, on trial for sexual assault and defamation and trying to appeal it, uh, especially if you're a presidential candidate. You tend not to um, want to focus on that since it's usually considered not good uh, to be in that situation. But Trump's different, right? Yeah. I mean, for all those idiots out there who keep saying, oh, the Trump campaign needs to just let Trump be Trump. Right. It's like – this yeah, <laughs> they are. This is, this is like the last thing that the professionals on Trump's campaign wants him to do is get up there and be like, look, I didn't sexually assault this woman. And the right. other woman who accused me of sexual assault is lying. And the other don't woman who yeah. accused me of sexual assault is lying. They don't want that. And then there was yeah. one point in the press conference is like, we'll get to the jobs numbers in a minute, because as you know, the labor department has revised down the number of jobs that have been created. Right. And the economy that happened earlier today. Slowing. Yeah. That's what they want him to talk about. And he just like steamrolled over that. And he's and he's giving these stream of consciousness uh, statements about his case. And the reason he's doing it is that he wants to. He's right. pissed off. He doesn't think he should have been sued. Remember, it's a five million dollar judgment. And then he continued to uh, slander, uh, according to the court. I put in quotes because it's the court saying it. The court, me. yeah. Is it yeah. fame or slander? Is there a technical difference? Is yeah, there a legal I, difference? I don't know. That's we, a good, we, we Well, I think, sla I think slander is unlawful defamation, right? Okay. Uh, you can defame anyone, but once you slander them, you are kind of unlawfully doing it. Mark has a side them. hustle as a lawyer, by the way. We yeah, should just well, having been a – well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> don't don't go there. Part. So the the reality is, is, is he wants to talk about these things. He doesn't think he should be brought into court. Right. He probably should have just had his lawyer give his – pitch because the lawyer gave a very clear reasonings for like, look, the, the allegations by E. Jean Carroll had no clear date. She had no real evidence. She right. had no police report. The two other people should not have been witnesses. They right. had no evidence either. Travesty of justice, et cetera. But right. Trump doesn't do that. And it was just this kind of long and circuitous stuff. An example of like how not a good communication it was is I picked up my 14 year old daughter from high schoolers early dismissal and i had to listen to this in the car and she's like is this oh god she's like, is this <laughs> like you know like she like couldn't believe this so yeah you should you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, play trump with your younger daughters uh not when he's talking about sex assault no or, yeah. or about, uh, sex abuse by the way That's sex not abuse sex isn't that different it's not, it's not assault, it's abuse uh, let's just make yeah. just levels out here so he was convicted um and this is an or he's found liable the found liable liable liable, liable. Yeah. and this is an appeal of that that's why he was in court today and look it, we're 60 days out right like we're 60 days right. out from an election the fact that he's spending this time in court is in itself not particularly great for him he doesn't he doesn't have team. to be there to do it yeah, but he doesn't have to be there, and he's choosing right, to be it's there. An appeal. He, and he chose to uh, hold this news conference, and he chose to go on these uh, asides. I want to play the the first clip because this was not about Eugene Carroll. This is about another woman he was talking about, and he makes this uh, goes on this long tangent, and then sort of rationalizes that he couldn't have possibly uh, been involved with this woman because, uh, as he says, she was the the chosen one. Let's listen. To that clip if we have it burn i start kissing her and making out with her what are the chances of that happening what are the chances and frankly i know you're going to say it's a terrible thing to say but it couldn't have happened 
It didn't happen. And she would not have been the chosen one. She would not have been the chosen one. She has gone around for years saying the story. Everywhere I go, she says this story. All right, we can leave it there. All right, chosen one. So, um, yeah, I mean, it just feels like that's like not, no, that's what people are going to focus on is who talks like that. Right. Well, that, and that's, that's one of the things you're seeing blaze across social media. You're not really seeing a lot of pro Trump accounts who are like, yeah, thank God he had this press conference, right? You're just seeing liberals just flood the zone. Like, look right. at this. Yeah, when we're talking about it, like a, we're going to see a historic gender gap in this election, probably. I mean, I don't think that stuff particularly helps. It does not. Maybe not. It, it, yeah. One could argue it could widen it more. Now, the but other thing that was kind of, of yeah. in, I don't know. The other thing that was kind of interesting, and you pointed this out, was he's sitting there, he's being flanked by his two attorneys in this case. Um, and he just sort of like, openly says casually like these guys are not up to snuff or so he was disappointed in them right he's he's disappointed. Disappointed. He's not, can we right. do we have that one let's play that one too and i'm disappointed in my legal talent i'll be honest with you <laughs> they're good they're good people they're talented people today at the uh, trial they didn't mention the the dress so the monica Lewinsky type dress was a big part of the trial <laughs> big big part of the trial I said, why didn't you mention that? And I heard there was a dress involved. All right. <laughs> it's just like, I'll let you reference this. I have a thought on this uh, after you're done, but man, oh, brutal yeah, for, this is, uh, this is, for his little One should there. not riff on stained dresses or dresses that were alleged <laughs> to have been stained, but in fact were not. Yeah, I mean, apparently his lawyers didn't, at, at the heart of this, according to Trump, is that Eugene Caro claimed that there was a dress with evidence on it, evidence. Uh, it, it, he, it turned out there wasn't evidence on it. He wanted that brought up at trial. Apparently wasn't allowed a trial. He wanted it brought up at the appeals court. Uh, but the thing is the appeals court, you appeal the stuff that's in the trial, what's in the trial, what's not in the trial. Yeah, you don't introduce really new like stuff. An appealable <laughs> issue there, right. And it's just, <laughs> but I mean, there's, it's, there's Trump at least sort of messaging, but again, like it's just style of messaging. Oh, see, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to give Trump the benefit of the doubt on this one. Weirdly yep. enough, I, uh, it, this is reminds me of like, it's like a totally different, I'm not trying to equate them totally because it's like a completely different mental mindset. But like when Barack Obama used to be like, I think I'm my own best speech writer, right? Like I'm my own best like political tactician or like, this is just Trump being like, you know what? I just would be the best lawyer if I had to be, if I could be. I don't have a law degree, but you know what? I could do it better than these guys. And it's just like, he's just so conceited. But they all are. That's what politicians are. They're conceited. Well, they all are. But again, like the reason you have a professional campaign staff is professional campaign staff doesn't want you as a candidate to put yourself in these situations. And then it's not even really clear, like everyone's, you know, Monica Lewinsky style dress. And everyone's like, wait, what? what like there's that. Speaking of being a lawyer, like being a lawyer, you lay foundation. Like this is a thing that exists and this thing that exists led to this and then this led to this and then this happened and he doesn't really do that it's just sort of brought up and dismissed and brought back up and a little tough to follow all right let's talk i want to shift gears ever so slightly but it's of the same genre which is you know trump's got multiple legal issues going on obviously many of them have been delayed and pushed back this particular one that we were just talking about uh involved eugene carroll and um he was appealing a a ruling a five million dollar judgment the separate New York legal issue is having to do with his conviction for falsifying business records. He was convicted of 34 counts um, that he was supposed to be sentenced uh, for this. That sentencing got next pushed week. back. Yeah. yeah, it was going to be next week. It got pushed back initially because of what the Supreme Court did. But it had been scheduled for September 18th. The judge in this case, Juan Marchand, uh, has ruled that he will delay uh, the sentencing until after the November election. Um, you know, it means that voters will cast ballots without knowing if the Republican nominee could face jail time. Arguably uh, a critical data point for voters to process prior to casting ballots. On the flip side, I think a lot of people sort of expected that this would be the case because uh, a sentencing of that magnitude with a presidential candidate uh, that close to an election would have been unchartered territory and would have been highly divisive and um, may have like called into question, you know, the 
you know, not legitimacy of it, but whether it was necessary to do in that moment. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you have any sort of immediate reactions to this, Mark, but it is just crossing the transom. So figured I'd throw it out there for you. Yeah, I think a win for Trump and that they would prefer stuff to happen later that could yeah. be bad rather than sooner. Uh, at the same time, kind of floating around in conservative circles and social media, there was some guerrilla undercover footage of a, a U.S. Department of Justice spokesman in the Southern District of New York who was captured at a bar. I guess he got honeypotted where he was ripping on the Alvin Bragg case and talking about how it was a travesty of justice. And, <laughs> you know, that's another sort of win for, for Trump. And he, he kind of obliquely referenced that today, but didn't really go into it that much in depth. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, there's a case to be made that um, I don't think it's like good or bad for Harris. It's hard to really know these things, but I could see the, you know, I'd been talking with someone at the Bulwark about this, about like, you don't want to have a sentencing uh, before an election. It's just going to sort of drive his people into a tizzy. It will get them really motivated. It doesn't do anything to motivate the democratic side of the aisle. Um but that, I mean, weirdly enough, weirdly enough, that in these moments where Trump has been uh, at the whims of the justice system is when people are coalescing around him. Um, again, that's just this. I'm just presenting the case, not saying I believe it. Uh, there is a specter now, though, that um, the sentencing will happen on November 26, according to news articles. He could win the election early November, be sentenced to jail late November, assume yeah. office January. I mean, what well, what are we doing here? This is this is really wild stuff. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not that familiar with. I tried to follow the the logic behind the New York case law and how it works, and if you did right. this, and then this happened. It's still tough to explain. It's tough to understand, and it's tough to explain. Right. So, what are we doing there? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> uh, what I think all of these things, what we're seeing today, there's the appeal in this case that he's arguing about. There is the sentencing issue from Judge Mershan that got delayed. And then there's Judge Chutkin in the January 6th election interference or vote counting interference case, however we, we phrase that. All of those kind of sharpen the mind or should sharpen the mind of Donald Trump. Right. There have been people who have told him, I have been told, and I've even written the phrase, I think you might have even edited, that this election is a choice for Donald Trump. It's White House or Big House. Right. And... and you, when Donald Trump, or better said, when Joe Biden had stepped down and Kamala Harris took over and there was this wave of positive press for her and Donald Trump was just sort of caught flat footed, he was really sort of unmoored and was sort of loosey goosey and unable to focus and angry. This stuff should probably sharpen his mind. And from what we understand, he is paying a lot more attention now and is sort of back more to his old form to realize like, if if he doesn't win the election, he's going to wind up in jail or in, in jail. prison. In right. one of those cases. It's hard to see that January 6th case, if it goes to trial, him not getting convicted in D.C. and therefore him not doing some sort of time. But right. Know. Well, they'll appeal the hell out of it. But yes, I, gr I grant you that. Um, I will quibble ever so slightly about the focus, I guess, relative to how he has been focused. He is focusing. Uh, but as you saw today, sometimes... The tracks go a little bit off. Anyways, Mark Caputo, man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be talking again soon, obviously, with the debate coming up on Tuesday. We'll probably sneak in one of these YouTube talks prior to then. Uh, take care, buddy. And thank you guys for uh, tuning into The Bulwark. I uh, really appreciate it. As always, subscribe to our YouTube page and then share this video with everyone that you know. And uh, have a good weekend.